So it's time for December pickups and within the past couple of days a lot of my shipments have come in so kind of surprised that they all got here as quickly as they did considering it's the holiday season on top of all the supply shortages labor shortages so maybe that's why they all came at once they just figured let's just send them all at once so I'm gonna go ahead and pick one to start with then I'll just start with this small envelope here should be the easiest to open I think this was an eBay purchase that's one of these. It's kind of like an EverDrive, but it's like a knockoff, a clone. I don't think it's a clone of an actual EverDrive. I think it's just something that was made, this uh, super card. And it's basically just a GBA cart, multi-cart, where you can put in a uh, full-size SD card in this case. and um, Or mini SD card, it looks like. I'm not sure. I'll have to check and see. And basically put your own ROMs and stuff on here. I bought this for a specific project that I want to work on and some of the other items in this pile might be for that as well. So we'll move on to the next box. Right, so the next item is this box here, and you can probably tell it's from Funny Plane, which makes console mods, mainly handheld, but I think they have others too. Let's open this up and see what I've got. So there's these buttons for a Game Boy of some sort. Again, it's just a screen kit for a Game Boy. Game Boy Color Shell, and there's another box that goes with the rest of this. Let me open it up real quick and show what I can. So in the other box here, I've got some extra battery terminals and a replacement uh, screen lens for the Game Boy Pocket that I redid recently uh, that had the scratched lens. I'm going to swap that out, make that look all nice and pretty. Let's move on to the next item. The next item I have are these little... ESP8266 modules that are pretty much used for a bunch of different electronics projects and they're also used in various different mods and stuff. What I bought these for specifically were to mod a GBS8200. Effectively it turns it into a really affordable and effective upscaler for various different retro consoles and retro computers. Then I'll upscale a 15 kilohertz display to a 31 kilohertz give or take so you know your older computers like the Amiga uh, the Atari line of computers, etc. Um, it was cheap enough that I was able to get like a three pack instead of just buying one at a time uh, because it was like a difference of like a dollar or two. So no big deal. All right, let's go to the next item here. This one is the largest box out of everything that came in. And I honestly forgot what it was until I checked the uh, shipping information. And what's in here is this, the Switch OLED dock, which is compatible with the original switch as well. I want to pick it up because it's you know, got this nice white and black finish here uh, and I always wanted an extra dock anyway to have with me. Now unfortunately even though as much as these things cost they don't come with an extra HDMI cable or a power cable so that's kind of annoying so I have to try to locate oh HDMI cables I've got but the power cable for it specifically I'm going to have to try to locate and I know you can buy some third-party ones and stuff but I don't trust them ever since the whole third-party docking situation where it would damage your switch so try to keep an eye out for an OEM one and then the last box is part of this whole shipment not necessarily the last item for the pickups though let's move on to that and the last item is in this box here let me open it up and we'll take a look and inside that box was this the analog pocket which if you haven't already seen all the reviews it's basically an FPGA based uh, well Game Boy system Although you can buy adapters to also play other handheld games such as the Game Gear, the Turbo uh, Express, which is just a portable version of the Turbo Graphics 16, the Atari Lynx, and I think the Neo Geo Pocket. I pre-ordered this when it was announced last year and due to supply shortages and everything, finally got it in. I'm going to do my own separate review based on a non-pro standpoint, so or from a non-pro standpoint. So I tried to, you know, order, you know, the Game Gear adapter for this so I could play Game Gear games on here as well. And it's 30 bucks. Okay, it's a fair price, I would say, considering it enhances the features that are here. But to ship it was $26. And I thought it was a fluke, so I logged out, logged back in again. Nope, $26. I don't know why it's so expensive to send it. I don't know if it's because of the labor shortages that are out there or what. But analog, you're probably not watching this video, but if you are... Figure that out. I'm not going to pay almost double for that to get it shipped over to my house. $5, $10, sure, but not $26. I don't know if any of you also have a similar experience or if you're lucky enough to get 
much more reasonable shipping. Uh, if you do, let me know in the comment below. So that's what came in this particular batch. Next item. Next is this, uh, not from Amazon, it's actually from eBay. And I know exactly what this is. So I will show you guys as well. And what's inside here is this uh, classic Gravis Gamepad Pro, which for those of you not familiar with it, is a PC gamepad that connects to the PC game port, usually on the back of a sound card, or in some computers, it's a separate port altogether. And it is definitely modeled after the PlayStation 1 controller. This one is not yellowed at all, and it's pretty clean. Uh, I just do obviously have to clean it a little bit. And it does support three modes. I'm not sure if they show up. Yeah, there's grip, two and one. So you can set yourself up as player one, player two by piggybacking off of this or grip mode which kind of turns this into a pseudo keyboard and there is grip software you can use to assign keyboard uh keystrokes and macros to buttons and that's how you're able to get 10 buttons plus directional pads on a on a pc so that's coming up for a project that may already be out or not i'm not sure but next item actually items come from a game shop and uh, managed to pick this up, Final Fantasy VII Remake for the PS4. Originally said I wasn't going to play it, but because it's already done in price so much, I figured, why not? It does come with this code here for Square Enix. I'm not sure, it's probably already been used, but just in case it hasn't. Um, both discs obviously are in here, and because uh, there is a data disc and a play disc. I'm guessing this one gets installed and the other one doesn't. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a reversible uh, cover art. Look at that. And I also found, and I didn't know this was a thing, but it caught my eye, so I picked up a copy of Twisted Metal for the uh, PS3. This one is also complete, manual and everything, game disc. And this also has reversible cover art. So if you're into that kind of stuff, keep an eye out for that game. And then I have two more from the same purchase. One is a copy of Sonic and Knuckles for the Genesis. This is actually what it's roughly worth if you look it up online, uh, minus shipping, of course. And I've been trying to find this for a decent enough price, at, at least trying to find it for what it should be going for. So I figured I'd pick that up. Still trying to find Sonic 3, and that'll complete my Genesis Sonic collection. I don't count 3D Blast. It's not in the same game style. Uh, and we will give this a try to make sure it works. And last, but definitely not least, is the player's choice version of Tetris and Dr. Mario. Label's a little beat up, but it's still good. And um, oddly enough, this one actually goes for more than the original version does. So I'll have to give it a cleaning and test it out as well, which we will do. Which we will do next. Okay, and we're back to my jankier than jankier setup. I'm still in the process of rearranging things, so I'm just going to make do with this setup again for now. We're going to first test Sonic and & Knuckles, make sure it works, and if it does, great. And then we'll go on to Tetris and Dr. Mario. And as usual, I'm testing on my Hyperkin consoles, just in case. But as we can see, it's at least booting up. Of course, I'll probably have to place the SRAM battery in here because it's more than likely more than likely dead, or at least not able to maintain enough uh, current to properly save. We'll see. I guess ultimately it doesn't matter. That was rude. But I'm satisfied it's working otherwise. Let's move on to Tetris and Dr. Mario. All right, and now Tetris and Dr. Mario. Nothing at all. Let's give the cartridge a cleaning and try again. Definitely a little bit of uh, dirt on there that I needed to clean. 
but it should be good to go now, hopefully, if the game works. Still getting a blank screen. Now it's possible that this game just doesn't work with the Super Retro N HD. Let's try it on a, uh, see if I can get my regular Super Nintendo hooked up to this uh, HDMI only TV. Okay, as you can see, it says no signal. That's because I'm using a really cheap AV to HDMI adapter to get the uh, Super Nintendo hooked up to this HDMI only screen. So let's see what happens. Nothing at all. Hmm. So I tried another game just in case, and it does work. So there could very well just be something wrong with this copy of Tetris and Dr. Mario. Next step is for me to open it up and give the contacts a more thorough cleaning, and we'll see what I can come up with. So Super Nintendo games need what's known as a game bit to open up, and it's basically this, almost like a reverse Torx type bit. In this case, it's a 3.8 millimeter one. And I think most of Nintendo's consoles use the uh, 4, 4.5 millimeter adapter, or 4.2, something like that. All right, let's take a look. The game itself is just pretty basic. There's not much to it, as you can see. It's got the ROM chip and the CIC chip, a capacitor, a couple of resistors, and that's really it. Looking at the components themselves, I don't see any damaged traces. There is some gunk or something. Might be hard to see, but there's a little bit of gunk here and stuff, so I'm going to try to clean it with some more IPA and see what happens. Now there might be... I'm not sure if, how visible it's going to be, but there's this black dot here. That might be a broken trace. Not sure I'll have to take a closer look. But for now, let me try getting this back together and seeing if uh, it'll play now. All right, let's see. Yeah, this time it's actually able to detect a video signal, but still nothing on screen. So there is something wrong with the cartridge. The question is, is do I try to fix it, since that's kind of the point of this channel, or do I return it uh, and hope that they will accept a return? Because looking closer, it looks like there's actually a few more traces that have some slight corrosion to them. But the main one that I'm really concerned with is the one that I pointed it out earlier. And that's going to be... Again, this one right there, which would be pin 15. This side just looks fine. Pin 15 goes to, let me see if I can trace this out. So it seems to trace to this pin here on the ROM chip. There's very, very little resistance on there. I'm not sure what that means. Actually, I take it back. These aren't resistors. These are capacitors. I was not paying attention to the label. Let me dig a little further. All right, so I got it working. Turns out all the traces were fine. It just had some kind of sticky substance that I wasn't able to clean off with just a Q-tip, so I had to use Magic Eraser. Ignore the picture quality. That's the adapter. But as you can see, it's working. So that's working. Let's make sure Dr. Mario works.
And so this game works too. I'm gonna definitely have to give the cartridge a cleaning. The outer shell itself ha definitely has some grime and stuff in it. And I still wanna give the PCB a little bit more of a thorough rinsing off, so. But it's good to know that it works. I can add that to my collection. Um, on to the next item. All right, let's move on to the next couple of things. One is this retro gaming magazine that I picked up when I was at Micro Center the other day to pick a few things up. I didn't even know these things existed, and I, it's pretty darn cool that they do. Obviously, they're showing off the Evercade versus their home console they came out with. They also have a handheld out. But they also go over a bunch of other stuff like Super Mario Brothers 3 and N64 years, I'm talking about DMA design, um, subscriptions, all these older style games. I'm, I don't even recognize this one. Monkey Island. Here's Aladdin. Uh, I don't know if this is the, oh, this is the Master System version, so that's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, these things exist and you can pick them up still apparently. And the other item that came in is this. So I said earlier when we were talking about using that ESP8266 uh, to help build a affordable upscaler, uh, the other part of that, and a few extra little steps and components, but the other part, major part of that, is using what's known as a GBS8200, which was originally designed as like an upscaler for arcade systems and things like that. This particular one can also do EGA and CGA conversion to VGA as well as YUV or component video. And it also comes with an extra cable that connects here for just standard RGB. I'm assuming that would come from a arcade machine. So the way the two interface with each other is that you're effectively disabling the onboard CPU and using the ESP to override everything. By default, this doesn't have the best performance. There's lag and it's not very good for retro uh, gaming, but when you replace the, effectively replace the CPU with an ESP, that has some custom firmware for it that'll take over control of everything and, or this might be the CPU, I'm not sure which. I have to look up the instructions, but basically it turns it into a really, really good uh, upscaler with very, very little lag added to it. It's not quite up to snuff like uh, the OSSC or the Retro Tink or anything, but for like under 50, 60 bucks in total parts and everything, it's based on what I've seen performance wise uh, through various uh, forums and YouTube videos and everything, it's fantastic. So, and the main reason I want to get this is because I do have a couple of retro computers that I'd like to hook up to modern screens and some retro consoles and stuff like that. So that should be a fun project. Not sure when I'll get to it, but I will eventually get to it and have a video out for it. If there are any more items, on to the next item, otherwise, that's it. And that indeed is it. So what did you think of my haul in December? Heck, what did you think of my haul throughout the entire year? Leave some comments below. Let me know if you liked anything, if you didn't like anything. Let me know if you have any recommendations or suggestions or anything. Otherwise, how'd you like the video? If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, but there's never any obligation, although I do appreciate it. If you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs down, but please leave a comment below as to why so I can try to use that to help improve things going forward. Thanks all, I'll catch you later.